If you looked at my crowd, when they come in a room, uh, you, you, I, I gave up on judging what the fuck people think. I got people coming in with like spikes through their eyeballs and fucking tottering in at the age of 962 and, and an eight-year-old that has got ADHD, but he loves the word fuck, and so I'm his favorite person. <laughs> so the spectrum of people who watch me are not really... Uh, I've got just as many conservatives watching me as, as I do the other side. So how much of a character is Larry? It's really Dan, right? I do, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of a he was His father was a, a preacher and a pig farmer from Nebraska. So you add those two together, you get Larry the Cable Guy. You know, I wrote the intro to his book. That's right, you did. I, I did. And the reason that. I did it was I was pissed at people giving him shit for uh, busting his hump and fucking getting to a point where he's successful and then saying that, you know, he was a right-wing lunatic. Now, he is, but, you know, you don't call somebody out for that it, because it's not really his act. His act is like, you know, hee-haw to the 10th power. And I don't think there are any sides left anymore, to be honest, because both sides, to me, both sides are so deeply mired Shit, that it is beyond my comprehension how to do what it is I'm supposed to fucking do anymore. But here's the thing, the whole right left thing is a bell, but most of us are at the top of the bell. But we don't hear about that, we only hear the extremist position, so we assume everybody's going to. Well, as of late, um, I don't think we are on a bell, I don't know what we're at. I do know this, I do know that there's a certain group of people in the country who believe in the individual to the point of it's the most important fucking thing on the planet is the individual and me, I'm it. And then there's another group of people who believe the government, the collective, the group, and that's the most important thing on earth. So that you have a group of people who read Ayn Rand and fucking took a piece of fiction. How do you read fiction and come up with a political philosophy? Ask Christians. It's fiction. It's fiction. <laughs> Christians, I don't give a shit. That's a book that somebody at least comes up with some mumbo fucking jumbo and stands there in a hat and does some fucking shaky things. And it makes it work. Now, I'm talking about somebody by themselves reading a goddamn book and then coming out with this libertarian thing and the beyond that that we are dick. I am the most important thing on the fucking planet. And that we are teetering at that position now where these people believe that the individual is so profoundly important and the government and the collective is a piece of shit. And that's because of communism. If you allow this group of people to actually work together, we're fucked. Because the next thing you know, we'll all be on farms fucking working together and singing those shitty communist songs. We're at this point now, I think, where the it's, it's not liberal conservative. It's psychotic and idiotic. <laughs> Nobody, no matter even how much you might like Sarah Palin, can actually envision a positive joke about Sarah Palin. I made the decision after she was nominated and I heard her speak the first couple of times after a couple of weeks, and I knew she was like, for me, a, a mother load. But I was so shocked that she was running. It, it stunned me so much. I said on stage, I wouldn't make jokes about her because I, could not live in this world if I believed she was a real person. <laughs> and so, I have, for, uh, for the entire time that she's been around, treated her as a hallucination. <laughs> I love talking to you about the time you did the White House press corps dinner. Yeah. You were right there in the belly of the beast. Yeah. What was that like? Well, what was weird, uh, Dick Cheney is to my right, and to my left is Mitch McConnell. And it's, it's really almost more than you can bear. <laughs> and I look to my right, and, and Cheney is laughing his tits off at my stuff. I mean, wow, slapping his knees and having the time of his fucking life. And all I'm thinking is, uh, I am evil. And I'm waiting for the stents to pop and stuff. <laughs> <laughs>
Stop <laughs> flapping his tits up and heavy on his leg. <laughs> Mr. Black, he's a prick. And I'm dealing with that. And then I turn to the left and Mitch McConnell. If I'm ever near that <laughs> fucking son, I'm in a punch. I mean, you, you know, we're not supposed to be violent in what we say to yeah, you. That son of a bitch, I'm going to punch you in the face. You, I mean it. Besides, that is politics. I don't give a shit about it. But it's an audience member. And you're sitting there, <laughs> fucking smile. Fucking pretend you're having a good time, you son of a bitch. You don't have to laugh. <laughs> And it's like he, he was holding a shit in or something. And I'd go from him back to him and back to him, and it was, it was a horrifying experience. That, that's so bizarre, because whenever comics are having, like, shitty sets, you always find that one audience member who really likes you. So every time you're like, this is going really bad, that guy still likes me, your guy was Dick James. Dick James. <laughs> so you have, to, like, you, you have to shake hands with Dick James. Yeah. OK, that's a moral dilemma for me. Nah, no, nah, he's a guy. What do you think? Well, no, no, he's, no, no, he's not just a yeah, guy. Yeah, Mitch McConnell, I'd have a goddamn dilemma. <laughs> oh, just because he got the joke. Yeah, I mean, you gotta shake his hand if Dick laughed the whole time. And no, oh, I'll tell you a really great Dick Kenny follow up story. I am at uh, a Larry King uh, benefit, you know, uh, for, you know, he's got a big, huge heart fund thing. And they, they buy hearts and shove them in people, they do something. And they, uh, so I'm doing this event, and my mother and father are there. My mother, it is a moral thing for my mother, because Dick Cheney is in the other room. People are paying like $5,000 for a photo with Dick Cheney. They come over to me and say, would you like your photo taken with Dick Cheney? I turn to my mother and say, would you like your photo taken with Dick Cheney? I'm not getting my photo taken with that son of a bitch. Never. And then she says, and besides that, there's a John McLaughlin of the McLaughlin Group was sitting 15 feet away. And she says, I gotta get over to that son of a bitch and tell him what a turd he is. <laughs> so, so I turn to my father and I say, uh, would you like your picture taken with Dick Cheney? And he goes, 